As you know, I'm very concerned about how easy it is to commit identity fraud in the UK business register. And I've chosen an arbitrary example here of my wife's divorce solicitor who chooses several middle names, several birth dates, and she registers each of our separate companies under different business addresses. Now that is relatively irrelevant to the bigger picture that I'm going to try and portray to you. Uh, but I'm going to try and find now uh, the businesses or the issues that involve funders for the Conservative Party in the UK and the deployment of a person called Bernie Eccleston who is very big on covering up Conservative Party funding scandals. He releases, according to the official transcript of the news, uh, money to cover up scandals that could well uh, despoil the reputation of the Conservative Party in the UK. Now, I, fa I began to stumble back into this arena because I was revisiting the videos that we made on Lord Boateng, uh, who's a Christian preacher, a munitions magnet with Aegis Systems Limited, uh, and they are registered in Eccleston Square in London. And I had completely missed that up to the revisitation of these videos that we made in the month of August in 2014. Lord Boateng is a really dangerous person. He became a cabinet member. He's from impoverished sub-Saharan Africa. He came to a place called Hemel Hempstead. There's a lot of contention about where he was schooled in Hemel Hempstead, but he's a Christian preacher and a munitions magnet which is an obvious conflict of interest. Uh, and when I learned that some of these companies, and particularly the massive Aegis, which takes in generals, field marshals, leaders of the nation, banking magnates, members of the Prince's Trust, and the usual power bro brokers that we talk about when we get close to the hub of the spoken wheel model that prevails all around our brutalized and globalized world, then I begin to smell the rat that should have been obvious to me in the month of August. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some insight, but I'm first gonna try and get up here on this computer uh, my website addresses uh, and that is Prof George Lee's front slash revelations and if you look up Ronnie Biggs you'll see this traditional story about Bernie Eccleston and how he funds the cover up how he plans the release of false news like the great train robbery to cover up the spying scandal that embroiled Christine Keeler and the Russian spies who were shagging her near Elton John's Watford Football Club where I have loads of friends and relatives who have unfriended me since I became a fraud researcher. It's quite sad that people are prepared to desert the honest man in a ruthless campaign to keep the world heavily armed and potentially to create human extinction because of their greed. I will not name names, but it is very, very close to people that I love dearly, and they seem quite oblivious to the reputational risks. Okay, so I'm looking now for Prof. George Lee's revelations, uh, and hopefully we can get you some images of Bernie Eccleston uh, and his colleagues. Uh, this should get us onto the front page of it very quickly. Uh, there we go. That's all you need to enter. There's a 
a search site up at the top right uh, and if you want snippets of my highlights that's the image you will see on Facebook if you seek me out there just under George Lees I live in Kelso in the Scottish borders and it's in the constituency that Michael Moore despoils by greed Michael Moore will not let me meet him that could be Michael Ellis Moore or it could be Michael Kevin Moore both of whom are involved in corrupted directorships one in the Parliamentary Foundation for Democracy Limited with only 3,000 Ponzi shells and is relatively innocuous and he resigned from that in the early noughties there's the index up there on the top right and in there I'm going to enter Eccleston okay and let's go for the great train robbery which was the earliest of his interventions on behalf of British Conservatives but maybe not British fascists I'm not sure how long the orgies have been going on involving fascists that were fascists between the wars in the lead up to 1945 and in the postscript to the tragic family tiffs that led to the death of over 80 million people in two tragic manipulated profiteering exercises okay there's Ronnie Biggs having a good time he's not got any scantily clad wenches around him in that particular images but all of the cover ups around that period involve sleazy characters we've talked a lot about the, the uh, Sydney, Se S Sydney Street Siege uh, and the Papa Sokolu characters and the costs of getting your masturbation paid for in the prostitution den that is portrayed in Cynthia Payne's uh, entertainment movies personal services okay there's Biggs he got a couple of million quid to flee from the country pretending that he had robbed the train in Buckinghamshire myself and my wife or my fiance at that time discovered some air balloons that had dropped into the field at the exact place where that train had been <laughs> robbed in the 1960s uh, and I want you to understand what the implications are of the deployment of Eccleston I've only understood it fully since late afternoon and you can see that it's getting dark outside uh, and this is really really dark news because it means that the understanding that I now have leads to the involvement of profiteers in Great Britain since the turn of the decade so we're into the noughties now it's 2014 we've just had an independence referendum and we've had Alex Salmond resign on principle because he lost it and what he would have gained if he had won it was that he would have obtained exactly the same as we had before with another tier of political quizlings that cost the country dearly for the running costs if they get elected out of office they get elected back in as list members so that the SNP in Scotland can have some token opposition in inverted commas if Nicola Sturgeon refuses to release this then I'm gonna dismember her reputation within the next two months if they let me live that long let's see a little bit more about the Ronnie Biggs cover-ups there he is there's some of the Formula One magnets there's Eccleston himself under the umbrella because where you get human evil like this as in Raysbury where Christine Keeler lived for a long time you get massive flooding and you get unpredictable weather patterns there are the funders for a lot of the scandals that we've talked about the little red scandal involving the British monarchies 
in the bringing down of the Twin Towers so NATO could storm into Iraq and Afghanistan under Tony Blair's watch. Here's the jokes up here about the police and law enforcement in Britain. There's Ronnie Biggs in his decrepit elderly years and there is a portrayal of the false news footage of a premeditated robbery that was there to cover up a, an international scandal. The launch of banks like Santander, which are named after the fictitious religious hoax that is St Andrew, patron saint of 19 countries, but never existed. Then you know that the world is hopelessly corrupted, and I've known that for four years already, but because my family are just simple people and all they're interested in is the latest dietary regime or the latest cooking methods in the Bake Off or the sporting results worldwide, then the world is tragically incapable of funding itself because these people steal all of the national funding streams. They are stealing directly from the treasuries. The IMF, the World Bank, the ECB steal and money launder all of the democratic cash into private pockets. That's Lord Condon, the boss at G4S, who reneged on the Olympics. And you've got the sleazy Nazi orgies and the involvement of people like this guy here uh, that's Max Clifford uh, and then you get the remuneration for the reputational insult of phone hacking of the celebrities who are actually the profiteers in these campaigns okay I'm gonna go down now and we're gonna see that it goes all the way back to World War two and we know a lot about that now in recent videos that I've made there's Biggs with the sexy women in Brazil great lifestyle entirely funded to cover up international crimes by international politicians and in this case of the Eccleston case that involves the Conservative Party primarily uh, but later on in his career he became involved there's the post-war post-World War One fascism and these are the Mitford sisters the first lady dies surrounded by Nazi officers and there we have the abdicating King and Queen of England who were personal friends of Hitler and we've told you all about their divorce coming through in the Candy Schloss castle in Austria very close to Hitler's nest we can then see the rallies of the fascists in pre-war Britain in London in 1939 and you can see that all the way back to those eras Formula One has been embroiled and right back up into the 2010 era when this coalition government was created you've got the resurrection of Nazi orgies in London and Tony Blair and Cameron entertaining fascists like the Murdochs on their yachts the Murdochs buy them private planes and all of it is continually stealing from the people Ronnie Biggs got justice this year at long last and God is looking down at this in horror that the human condition is so greedy that we seem incapable of stopping it. Now I'm going to take you back to the other computer and it's getting a little bit dark for that and the computer may well be asleep but what I discovered was that when you visit the corporate interlocks of that man Boateng who came from impoverished Africa became a cabinet, cabinet member in Tony Blair's government uh, and he's now a lord of the realm uh, and a Christian preacher and a long-term director 
at Aegis Defence Services Limited. It was only this afternoon that I noticed that Aegis Defence Services Limited is registered at Eccleston Square in London. And then I thought, ah, after all that I've learned, why don't I take a look at Eccleston Square in London as a business hub? And I find out that its postcode is S1V1PX and I get a list of companies. And it is ever so <laughs> exciting to see that a lot of them are associated with defence uh, and I've not had the time to investigate all of them in detail but let me just read them off so there are two pages of this the postcode is it's Eccleston Square London SW1V1PX and you find FCB Inferno Limited Aegis Defence Services Limited which ah merd sorry when I use this computer I keep encountering this problem of scanning down so there's Aegis Defence Services Limited AMS Advanced Marketing Services Investments Limited then it gets sinister Trident 3 Limited Trident 4 Limited. When you look at them, it's the same directors interlocked illegally concurrently so that they can steal from the people, they can launder. And as you'll see when we open up the directorial boards, they use the corrupted secretarial and directorial systems that we have denounced in multiple videos in these series. Then we get I don't know what these are about, but I will look at them in the next couple of days. Rubicon Global Solutions Limited. Now the Rubicon joke is the joke about Julius Caesar. He was the only one of the Roman emperors that believed that the empire should be there on behalf of the empire citizens. And what he gifted in his will to his nation was the wealth of the country to be shared amongst the citizens of the country that's why he got the 40 knives in the back when he crossed the Rubicon which is a river on the east coast of Italy when you, when you cross that with your army it becomes obvious that your intent in telling the senators and corrupted Rome that you have fought for that vast empire and you don't intend to give it up to their frauds and their crimes and their deceitful methods of cheating those people uh, but I don't know what the modern day context of Rubicon Global Solutions Limited is but I will find that out in the next couple of days and relay it to you then you get the Aegis Foundation uh, then you get Aegis Recruitment Limited then you get ICC Low Limited, Aegis Response Limited, Prof. Dr. Cadden and Culligan True Hand Limited. Now Rupert Murdoch was funded by the Nugent Hand Bank uh, and a lot of our debates on identity fraud and the ownership of the world and companies like Rio Tinto have taken in the Hancock dynasty I am only speculating about the links to true hand and the relevance of the word hand in a corporate label like this uh, I will find out in the next two or three days what all of these companies do and if it's particularly sinister then I will let you know here we now have Fire Gap European Adrian Limited now Arian you know all about the warmongering context of Aryan myths, the Norwegian and the Northern European myths that led to the generation of Wotan uh, and all of those big godlike creatures that were involved in 
mind control and the actual clerical beliefs of vast nations and vast continents for huge tracts of historical time the Aryan menace and the Aryan joke is of course the joke about the Piso family creating Christianity Wotan and Woden Woden are early names for the Norse gods Wood is a joke about the Christian cross these stories could all have been written as recently as the 19th century or the 20th century even as we've shown you recently with the Garden of Eden Garden of Aden stroke Yemen jokes yet the evidence for that is produced by Google Maps using a scanning tool called NOAA N-O-A-A they think it is really funny to steal from the people and to control their minds and their souls by religious hoaxes so Adrian when that name is used Harry even the name of my own son is a joke about the author of the New Testament and that runs for century after century and it takes in the Pistorius trial in South America where the name Piso is used Arius Piso was one of the early authors uh, and it is just really really sad that such a capable and beautiful earth like this is run by profiteers and scamsters for centuries next company is Fire Gap Limited J Worldwide Limited McCann Ericsson Healthcare UK Limited now these are just registered in Southwest 1 1 PX that's a healthcare company they may be completely innocent but the Trident companies are not I will take you to them again after we visited page 2 on this listing ok we're on to page 2 now and what we've got are Rubicon International Services Limited very familiar to the one that we had on page 1 Segea Limited Dormant Company Segeus Limited STG Operations Limited Ethos Strategic Communications Limited Dormant Company so that's us to the bottom so before I get you bored let's go back up to the sexy bits and the Trident project you know of course that Trident has been in the UK it's been based in Clydeside for several decades it has been effectively a nuclear deterrent uh, and it has been the scene of since we returned from New Zealand of incidents involving firearms and the nuclear defense police that are run by a man called uh, who's the famous horror movie magnet and director uh, that would be Hitchcock so Hitchcock that used to run the Bedford Constabulary became the heavily armed nuclear police de enforcement uh, leader from his base in Bedford he was then transferred to Essex where he trained with heavily armed police personnel and he became in ch he became the leader of the nuclear constabulary and very soon after he was appointed there was a shooting incident on Clydeside on board one of the Trident vessels now that could have been a false news article to take the attention of investigative journalists like me off the ownership of the Trident companies I'm going to show you what that is now I apologize for the footage it's very dark in this room uh, and I just want you to get the message I'll give you the citations for the link to this it's on page one 
of the companies that are registered in on companies in the UK yeah and the postcode that I've searched is SW1 V1PX SW1 I get the impression that that is where MI5 and MI6 have their London headquarters it's where Adele wanders along the riverside uh, in her lovely songs uh, and it is right next door to the power base in the UK right on Thameside right at the head of the Intel hub here we find Trident 3 Limited and I will open that now and I will just relay for you the horrible facts about who runs it ok Trident 3 Limited 84 Eccleston Square London SW1V1PX non-trading company the first one that we find Trident 3 incorporation date 26th of March 2001 13 years old Britain was relatively peaceful then that was before we stormed into Iraq but unfortunately New York was anything but peaceful New York was the venue for the bringing down of the Twin Towers involving the British monarchies involving the Bush dynasty involving the Arab funders and the Jewish masterminds for that campaign and allowed Tony Blair and George W. Bush to storm into Iraq and then subsequently to brutalize Afghanistan you'll be getting bored with these repetitive stories about the precipitance for the last campaigns to sequester the three independent banks that control the issuance of money in innocent countries in what has been the brutalized Middle East for almost 2000 years okay now there are 63 corporate documents on there and I don't have time or the light to show you them all but let me read off the directors and secretaries Graham Binns Jonathan Newman he's listed twice so he will be both a director and a secretary then we get the full list of current and past directors and this is Trident 3 remember Dominic Armstrong now I don't know whether which Armstrongs those are but when I met <laughs> when I met the Armstrong that presents the uh, quiz program on the telly at Blenheim which is Winston Churchill's gift from a grateful nation for being a mercenary not Winston Churchill the Churchill dynasty's gift from a grateful nation for being its mercenary leaders in conflicts since the battle at Blenheim way back before the Orange Wars then you begin to see that there is a continual theme in these series of videos the next past director is Gilmer Blankenship Mark Bulo, Jeffrey Day Hallmark Registers Limited nominated director Hallmark Secretaries Limited nominated secretary David Hawkins which is spookily similar to the Hawkins that presents the Abel Danger programs across the pond and I've written to Hawkins several times and asked him if he's the father or the relative of the woman Hawkins that presents the news with Eamon on Fox News and on the Sky News bulletins in the morning they are very strongly pro-monarchist eh, and nobody will tell me whether or not the woman Hawkins who represents the World Wildlife Fund and Prince Charles and raises funds for it and also presents Sky News on the mornings with Eamon eh, I don't know whether or not they are related but the names are spookily similar and you are learning 
that every time they change the spelling it's for a premeditated reason to cover up their involvement in the massive manipulation of geopolitical issues on every continent Sarah Mason Pearson not too sinister but the Pearsons are involved in a massive financial and money laundering empire that I discovered just because I was pursuing one of my loyal students whose boss died in a tragic hand gliding accident uh, and they have been involved in in several incidents involving my family and sadly their children have become subject to psychiatric illnesses uh, and when I ask those old colleagues of mine that profess to have been admirers of mine admirers of mine as an inspirational PhD leader for them they refuse to engage even in a conversation uh, and I know that this world is full of deceit and treason it is really really sad when the people that were the last people to visit you before you emigrated to distant continents and a far away hemisphere that they came and enjoyed your, their time with you on the river and they soaked up your tuition skills as a fishing coach and as soon as you're gone and as soon as you're forgotten all of the legacy of the training that you gave them is overlooked and then you learn that the Pearsons are at the heads of a financial empire and I've got whole dockets and PDFs on the Pearsons and their involvement in money laundering in centres across the UK which are actually hubs for the globalised trading world and the fraud that we now live in the last name is horrific because the last name on this list is Tim Spicer the mercenary soldier that was involved in the brutalization of sub-Saharan Africa the man that skipped conviction that was tried, let off several times uh, he's mentioned in my black forces timeline the mercenary armies have been commissioned by Prince Philip and the World Wildlife Fund to dismember any sovereignty that any of the nations in sub-Saharan Africa might have been entitled to they are brutalized by heavily heavily armed militias and mercenary armies and it is entirely for profit like the stories we've told you about General Sir Mike Jackson Richard Dearlove who is the head of MI6 which is also registered in on the riverside in southwest one like the serious fraud unit which is only a post box number there are no officials in charge of the serious fraud unit in SW1 it's just a post box number they do not care about the fraud they allow it to happen and they have got their finger on a nuclear extinction button that is run by mercenary generals and the government thinks it's really clever to trickle feed the people with stories about Eccleston funding the Conservative Party covering up scandals paying off Tony Blair so that Tony Blair could not take up the EU presidency for life for what Gordon Brown did as a favour to the EU to get the Euro potent and prosperous when to Gordon Brown crashed the value of Britain's gold uh, in, in one of those premeditated gestures when he was the Chancellor and Blair was the boss in that new Labour government that killed two million people and innocent bystanders in Iraq so that he could then become the boss at the uh, he could be then become the envoy to the Middle East okay now I'm going to take you back to Trident 4 
and we'll have a little look at the composition of trident 4 so that's trident 3 and there we're back on the list there's trident 4 okay the light is going here in Scotland now uh, but hopefully you're getting the gist of what I'm telling you we've just had a Scottish referendum and all of the SNP candidates its leadership team rejected Trident yeah none of them are in control of Trident it's a private for profit business registered in London and run by mercenary leaders so let's see what we can find there are 61 corporate documents listed here uh, and the directors and secretaries full list current and seven past directors very familiar as if and this one's live so the last one was dormant this one's live it's a fake you can launder money into the other company when you want to take profits you declare that the proceeds are very small and that you don't have to pay any tax uh, and you can launder the money out of the country using the vents that we'll see further down the list so current directors Graham Binns since 2011 to the present day Jonathan Newman also a secretary for four years since 2010 when this government was elected Dominic Armstrong still there this is the live company not the dormant one then you've got Mark Bulo, Jeffrey Day and then in a very sinister context above Timothy Spicer the mercenary boss you have Instant Companies Limited and Swift Incorporations Limited now all of my followers who are beginning to understand how to use company check and understand how you can launder money out of our countries in boluses of less than a million pounds at a time know that these are two of the most corrupted companies on the globe if I were to click on them we would find that they had been involved of instant transactions so there you can see instant Companies Limited engaged between the 23rd of August 2002 and the 23rd of August 2002 less than one day nominated as a director on a Trident nuclear weapons project these are nuclear submarines they make their way around the globe goodness knows how many warheads they trade in a calendar year and what the lifetime is of each one the SNP were dead keen to be rid of the shame uh, and I don't know what the nationality is of these leaders but then you get Swift Incorporations Limited here we are right at the bottom of the list it was engaged between the 23rd of August 2002 oh and the 23rd of August 2002 only for one day as a nominated secretary Timothy Spicer sandwiched in the middle was engaged between 23rd of August 2002 and the 25th of March 2010 he's a millionaire from what he's done to Africa and I only learned this afternoon that he is part of the Trident scandal I'm gonna get that on air now and get it out to the world as quickly as possible you need to try and start listening to these videos and I want the ordinary people of the world to get in touch with me like they are beginning to do because the free press will not release this the governments will not release this Salmond has resigned in shame because he has deserted his country already I will send this tomorrow morning to Nicola Sturgeon and if she refuses to accept it I will get more and more in her face it is scandalous 
it is really, really dangerous to play profiteering games with nuclear weapons. We've been doing it since David Cameron was 24 in Mrs. Thatcher's regime in the Republic of South Africa. Uh, and I had little insight into why Eccleston was deployed as a diversionary tool until 4 o'clock this afternoon. I now understand it entirely. It's nearly dark, but the world will be enlightened by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning unless they take me out in my bed this evening. It is tragic, it is brutal, it is greedy, and you can stop it by confirming that you know what I know and you tell your MP that it must stop this year.